Hey Cake Charms and welcome back to another video. Now as you can probably tell from behind me, it's a, it's a rather busy week in the Mr Baker's Cakes kitchen this week and in fact I'm in the middle of shooting another tutorial for Renshaw at the moment. While I was doing it I thought it would be a fantastic opportunity to share with you another of my favourite ways to cover my cake boards. So today I'm going to be showing you how to create a stone tile effect on your cake boards. Let's get to the video. Now a stone tile effect is absolutely one of my favourite ways to finish a cake board if I'm making a cake that's themed maybe perhaps around something you'd have in the garden, like a pot of flowers, or oh gosh I don't even know. What I do know is that a well covered cake board never fails to bring your cake to life. So if you haven't already checked out my tutorial for a wood effect covered cake board, make sure to have a look in the link up in the corner. Anyway, let's get cracking. So we're starting with some grey sugar paste that I've just coloured with a little bit of rainbow dust gel colour in grey and I'm just dusting my work surface with some corn flour and then rolling out my sugar paste with a rolling pin. If you get any air bubbles these can be popped with a needle, I'm using an acupuncture needle here, I'm just pushing in at the side and then pushing the air out through the hole. Prepare your cake board by brushing it with a little bit of cold boiled water and then gently lift your sugar paste into place smoothing it down first by hand and then with a fondant smoother. Transfer the cake onto a turntable and then use a sharp knife to trim around the edge in a downward sawing motion. Remember if you get any paste building up on the knife to remove this otherwise it can cause the paste to drag down. Just like in last week's video we're going to be using some tin foil to create the texture so scrunch this up into a ball and then push it all over the cake and pressing it into the sugar paste. Remember to move the tin foil around so that you don't end up with too uniform a texture. Next, grab a food safe dowel. I'm using a wooden dowel here and press it into the paste to create the divisions between the tiles. You can do this in a pattern of squares, a pattern of rectangles, or why not go a bit crazy and do something a bit more haphazard. Turn the board around and do it in a perpendicular direction. And then just grab a modelling tool and smooth over those just to neaten them up. Grab your knife again and just trim once more around the board because we would have pushed the paste slightly out of place. And we want this to be absolutely as neat as can be. Now switching to an airbrush, I'm using black rainbow dust airbrush colour and I'm mixing it with a little bit of dipping solution so it's not too strong. Top tip, if you block the end of the gun with your finger and pull back on the trigger it will cause the air to bubble up through the colour mixing it together. I always keep a piece of kitchen roll at hand to test the spray before I start using it and then we're just going to run around the outside of the board holding the airbrush pen as horizontally as we can to allow that colour to spread across the surface picking up all of the beautiful texture. Add a final spray across the whole board, just slightly, and we are done airbrushing. It should look a bit like this. Next I'm just grabbing some cold boiled water and a paintbrush, and I'm just going to run through those grooves one more time to remove any build up of colour. We want these to stay quite pale. Do this in both directions. I'm also cleaning my paintbrush off each time so that that water stays as clean as possible. This last step is a bit of an extra one, but if you do have access to some white edible paint, I've got the Natasha Collins range from Squire's Kitchen. You can just use this to go through those grooves one more time, creating the effect of some grouting. Remember to run the brush backwards and forwards in both directions to get a nice even lay down of colour. And once you've done that, you are done. So there you go guys, that was how to create a stone tile effect on your cake boards. And here is the finished thing. Now it might not look like much now, but by the time that this has got the finished cake on it, 
it's gonna look absolutely awesome. Now, as I already mentioned at the start of the video, that will actually be a tutorial that will be going up for Renshaw in the next week or so, so do keep an eye out for it. Not only will I be recapping how to create this cake board effect, but I'll also be showing you my super simple way to create a fantasy take on carnations without all of the normal flower making gear that you might need. I do hope you enjoyed that video, and if you did, why not let me know by clicking the thumbs up button down below. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from Mr Baker's Cakes here on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down there on the right. You can also ring the bell if you would like to receive a notification of every time I upload a new video. But as always, thank you so much for watching guys, and I will see you next Friday for another video. Take care.